We have a place here called the Victoria Falls. Sometimes back, 100 years back, some gentlemen from, gentlemen from England came here. And our parents thought uh, we must show this guy the beauty God has given us. And this guy was called Jeff Livingston. So our parents went and showed him Mosi Otunya. Instead of writing back to Queen uh, Victoria to say, there is a wonderful place called Mosi Otunya, he said, Madam Queen, there is an excellent place here which we are naming after your name. Queen Victoria. So even today, when we say, please come and see Mosi Otuna, very few people come. If we say, come and see Victoria Falls, actually, grow old. People come. But same token, I pay special tribute to Miss Vera Songwe, the former executive secretary for ably steering this strange institution, st strategic institution. We commend a bold leadership during a time characterized by the COVID-19 pandemic and other collective quest to accelerate development, modernization, industrialization, and prosperity for all the peoples of Africa. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this 56th session United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, which is financing the transition to inclusive green economies in Africa, imperatives, opportunities, and policy options is most apt, given the complex climate change related challenges facing our world today, in particular the third world. Africa among them. It is my hope that your discussions at this conference will help sharpen our strategies and the first track our efforts to attain the Africa we want as outlined in the African Union's Agenda 2063. The world is undergoing major turbulences and transformations, mainly on account of production, production, production activities. These are in turn negatively impacting on ecological systems and social equity, resulting in imbalances between and within countries while sparring climate change, biodiversity losses, and the non-inclusive growth. Specifically, the effects of climate change are increasingly constraining African countries from exploiting their rich natural resources endowments in a sustainable manner, leading to diminishing returns among economic value chains in our respective economic jurisdictions. Heat waves, floods, tropical cyclones, and the prolonged droughts are having devastating impacts on communities, economies, and livelihoods in the third world. Large numbers of people, especially in Africa, and the global south in general are increasingly at risk of being thrown into vulnerability by climate change. 
For us in Southern Africa, the ongoing El Nino phenomenon is currently affecting weather patterns in some parts of the region with our agriculture and energy sectors negatively being impacted. These realities necessitate structural shifts towards resource efficiency, non-polluting, equitable models of economic growth. Hence, it is commendable that this year's session will discuss financing solutions and models, technology developments as well as policy options and opportunities for the transition to inclusive green economies in Africa, among others. The adoption of multi-pronged pathways is thus crucial for inclusive green economies. These must not only aid in poverty reduction, but also safeguard ecological thresholds that support human development, support health, and the well-being of populations in Africa. Further, these should enable Africa to deal with multiple common challenges of climate change. The ripple effects of the post-COVID-19 pandemic, geopolitical shocks, as well as financial crises, and excessive debt overhang, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, global greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise as climate change wreaks havoc on nations that are least responsible for the emissions. Putting a significant strain on Africa's public finances, growth prospects, and employment levels. This is notwithstanding that Africa accounts for less than 5% of global greenhouse gas emissions and has natural capital that reduces the effect of carbon emissions. At the same time, polluting countries are lagging behind in honoring their commitments to mobilize resources under mechanisms such as the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Our last meeting in Glasgow promised the third world that the first world would raise 100 billion. Perhaps you are too far to hear the progress. It is therefore necessary for those responsible for the high global pollution to honor their obligations with regards climate financing. Meanwhile, as Africa, we remain cognizant that the movement towards clean technologies presents immense opportunities to unlock our continent's huge natural resource and human potential. We must be proactive and mobilize financial resources from both domestic and international sources to facilitate the adoption of clean and low carbon technologies in our respective jurisdictions. The transition to inclusive green economies also provides opportunities for better cooperation and partnerships between governments and the private sector to forge green growth investment strategies that benefit our communities. In this regard, the role of the public-private partnerships as well as that of development partners must be clearly be defined and promoted in order to increase the level of climate financing. It is also important 
to see investments in climate proofing and adaptation as a way to build greener resilience, greater resilience of communities and the nations against this common adversary of our time. Esteemed delegates, as African countries, we have the weighty responsibility to boldly and decisively tackle the challenges faced by our respective economies. We must look from within and among ourselves for solutions. We cannot afford to bury our heads in sand. I therefore challenge you to pursue robust and innovative measures to unlock maximum benefits from our natural resources, which essentially starts with the sharing of ideas through deeper collaborations among ourselves. Africa must build climate resilience infrastructure to drive green industrialization that is inclusive, sustainable, eradicates poverty, and creates jobs. To this end, climate financing instruments must be leveraged to reap maximum benefits from the vast natural resources of our continent, Africa. Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development from across Africa are called upon to come up with alternative resource mobilization initiatives that transform our economies in line with technological developments to meet our climate goals and emerging demands. We must think outside the box and trust in our homegrown initiatives. This should be complemented by mainstreaming the principle of green economy in policy reforms, regulation changes, and strategic investments in order to ensure sustainable development that leaves no one and no place behind. We should, however, be mindful of the need to take account of the uncertainties and the risks to future economic growth inherent to replacing the conventional economic model with a green economy. In addition, African countries should take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, riding on ICTs and new technologies. The need to nurture and grow a broad spectrum of value chains that can generate green industrial development cannot be overemphasized. We must equally promote investment in green sectors, facilitate technology transfer, develop green investment standards, and encourage regional cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, Zimbabwe has been actively participating in international negotiations on climate change. We are among the first countries to sign and ratify the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This was followed by our ratification of the Kyoto Protocol. The country has developed strategies and the plans to curb the escalation of greenhouse gas emissions. To date, the National Climate Change Response Strategy has been adopted to provide a comprehensive and strategic approach to adaptation, mitigation, technology financing, public education and awareness 
through our economic blueprint, which is the National Development Strategy number one, we are increasing agricultural production and productivity with emphasis on irrigation development, especially among our communal and smallholder farmers countrywide. One of the climate change challenges we face uh, sorry, while the climate change challenges we face remain immense, they are surmountable. We call upon the global north to bear their burden and face up to their responsibilities by honoring their commitments in order to realize the transformations needed on the climate action agenda as promised in Glasgow. On our part as Africa, we should leverage on the vast forest resources we are endowed with on the continent to garner more finances for sustainable development. This includes leveraging on the increasing carbon markets, which are expected to keep growing. Let us capitalize on collaboration as African states to mobilize resources for financing our transition towards inclusive green economies. Furthermore, once governments have the mandate to deal with emerging challenges, businesses have the innovation, technology, and the drive to deliver all the solutions we need. Programs in this regard must be scaled up. Through investments in science, technology, and innovation, the transition to inclusive green economies must aid in the development of technologies that emphasize on sustainability, resource efficiency, and emissions reductions. This must in turn facilitate and accelerate improvements in the economic, economic and the social well-being of our communities and peoples. No matter what difficulties may come our way, we must focus on a people-centered development philosophy that leaves no one and no place behind. One that builds synergies among nations and promotes balanced development across our African continent. Together with unity of purpose, we can indeed build the Africa we want, brick upon brick, stone upon stone, and step by step. In conclusion, I once again congratulate you all for this successful conference and invite you to find the time to visit the majestic, now here I have to explain. If I say find the time to visit the majestic Kimosio Tunya, few of you will go. But okay, find the time to visit the majestic Victoria Falls. The smoke that thunders. Also feel free to explore other tourist destinations in, a, in and around this beautiful resort city, such as the Wange National Park. To those who are coming to the Victoria Falls for the first time, I would like to give you a tip. Just go to the Victoria Falls, remove your jackets, receive the inspiring spray of the Mosi Otunya. You may feel wet at the time, but we guarantee you, as a Zimbabwean, that by the time you reach your car, you'll be dry.
With these remarks, it is now my sincere honor and pleasure to declare this 56th session of the Conference of African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development officially open.